Right now, the Prime Minister is uh, on a boat uh, on his way out to the INS Vikrant, which is a really interesting and fairly significant development. The INS Vikrant is the first ever indigenously developed and built, or largely indigenously uh, developed and built, aircraft carrier. It's a point of enormous pride for India that it's managed to muster the resources, the capital, and most important, importantly, the know-how to, uh, to actually create the INS Vikrant. And Anthony Albanese is, we are told, the first foreign leader to actually be given an opportunity to visit it, to actually go on board and have a look at some of India's military capability. And of course, uh, Beverly, this visit doesn't come in isolation. It comes at a time where you see rapidly uh, and, and uh, intensifying military ties between Australia and India. You see India, Australia, Japan and the United States taking part in Operation Malabar. Uh, you have an announcement from Anthony Albanese tonight that on top of that, uh, the India will, for the first time, join Operation Talisman Sabre, which is a multilateral uh, exercises uh, in Australia. That in itself is also significant. Plus, you just have a far more intense pattern of exercises, uh, military exercises, uh, official defence official exercises, uh, exchanges between top brass, the thickening of the uh, the, the, the muscle and the uh, and, and the fat in the uh, in the defence relationship that we've seen over the last decade. So I, I don't think that the symbolism here is any accident. Uh, India is signalling that it's willing to deepen defence ties with Australia and of course that is music to Australia's ears because it knows that India is going to be a crucial partner for it uh, in its attempt to strike some sort of regional balance that will allow China of course to remain a major player uh, and a major military in the region but, but not a hegemonic one. Yeah. And it's not only military ties, defence ties between Australia and India, but to the Prime Minister earlier tonight, sat down with business people, and this has been another key part of this trip. Yeah, that's right. Anthony Albanese uh, has talked about one of the uh, three pillars of this trip being his desire to try and boost trade and economic links. Now, to be clear, there is already in some ways a fairly substantive relationship economically between Australia and India. It's our sixth largest trading partner. But given India's commensurate size and wealth, the, the, the economic relationship remains pretty underdone. And on top of that, it remains a bit too narrowly based on a couple of key uh, resources, in particular coal, uh, and then away from resources, uh, traditionally, of course, the education space as well. You've seen huge numbers of Indian students come to Australia uh, at least pre-COVID, uh, they're now beginning to return. So you have an economic relationship which is not non-existent, but which just simply hasn't matched the pace of growth that we've seen in the strategic and political domains. And I think that's one thing that both sides realise has to be fixed over time. Now, we have seen a bit of progress. Uh, last year, we saw the uh, agreement and ratification of a free trade agreement, a so-called low-hanging fruit or early harvest agreement between the two countries. That has had the impact of taking a lot of tariffs off Australian goods uh, and uh, also Indian goods. Uh, but some really knotty and difficult areas remain uh, in, uh, in fields that remain politically sensitive in both countries. The agreement also doesn't cover investment, which is going to be a really important part of the uh, economic relationship going forward. Now, expect Mr Albanese to push when he meets uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi tomorrow to try and really kickstart those advanced negotiations on a full seeker or comprehensive economic uh, cooperation agreement. Uh, the view of most analysts is that it's going to be difficult work to get India over the line, but it's not going to be impossible. Uh, if there's a political will there, then it's just possible that there might be a way. Yeah. Stephen, today's events and the festivities earlier too were somewhat overshadowed by the leaking of the details around the AUKUS agreement between Australia, the UK and the US. Uh, yeah, that's right. The, uh, the Prime Minister, perhaps unsurprisingly, when he uh, gave a press conference here uh, in, uh, or earlier in the day in, in Gujarat, um, was bombarded with questions not about India, uh, but about the AUKUS agreement uh, in the wake of several reports overnight from multiple international media outlets, including Reuters uh, and Bloomberg, amongst others, which seem to reveal elements uh, of the uh, AUKUS plan, which is going to be announced by uh, Anthony Albanese, along with Rishi Sunak and uh, the US President Joe Biden in just a few days in, uh, in San Diego. 
Now, perhaps unsurprisingly, that has been more than a bit of a distraction here. Anthony Albanese has refused to confirm any of the details of those reportings, including reports that Australia will essentially buy perhaps three or five Virginia-class nuclear-powered submarines uh, to fill that capability gap before it develops its own boat in conjunction with the US and the UK. Uh, he's simply been saying that you'll have to wait a few days to see what's revealed. But, look, all the focus uh, over the next few days, I think, is inevitably going to be split. Yes, there'll be a big focus uh, on India, and what's happening here. This is a substantive, significant relationship, but there's also going to be half an eye, at least when it comes to commentators, analysts and the media, on what he's going to do in a few days' time uh, on the west coast of the United States with the US and the UK. That's going to be a truly significant announcement with real long-term and profound implications for Australian strategic policy.